SQL for everyone. My promise to you in this video is if you watch this till end, then no matter which background you come from, no matter what is your level of knowledge in SQL, but SQL will not haunt you in future. You will be comfortable with SQL. That's my promise to you. And your promise to me has to be that you will watch the video till end, even in 2x, but watch till end. Okay. Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. Let's start the SQL tutorial with all the steps right from step one to writing a complex query. Let's see guys. So guys, I'm sure you have watched many SQL tutorials. Then how this is different, right? So here we will understand with a huge case. I will not go into this is where clause, this is having clause, this is group by. We will not go like that, okay? We will try to solve a huge case, okay? I'll come to what is huge case in some time. Before that, um, some of you are very new. I'm, I'm assuming you are from the scratch you are learning. So why learn SQL? It's my duty to explain you. And what is the difference between data and information? Preparing environment and databases because we will need database to run queries. Type of SQL and flow of select, very, very important. And then we will go to a huge case and solve step by step to learn everything from scratch. Okay. So guys, first thing is, why learn SQL? Remember, it is a hands-on exercise. As I told you, if you want, make it 2x and practice later, or you can practice parallelly. Okay. So for some of you who is very new, why learn SQL? Okay. So uh, I remember one pic where, uh, you know, one, one person was holding all the data engineers and data scientists and data analysts, everybody. And in this person's name, it was written SQL. And that's a very relevant picture, okay? So what happens is no matter you are data engineer, no matter you are data scientist, no matter you are data analyst, no matter you are even business analyst, okay? SQL is one of the skill that you must have in your bucket and you go for any of these interviews, you can expect some SQL questions around SQL, okay? Now, what is SQL? So SQL basically stand, uh, stands for structured query language, structured query language. So as from the name only, you can think it's a query language. Query language means we want to query something. We want to question something. Where from we want to question? Let's try to understand with a simple use case. Now, this is the world of online shopping, okay? So you go to Flipkart, okay? You go to Flipkart and you purchase some items from Flipkart. So what happens? Some data gets generated. This data goes and sits in a database. So wherever this sits, we call it as a database. Tomorrow, Flipkart CEO comes and he wants to see that, hey, what was my total sales in last one week? So what will help him? Structured query language or SQL will help him. Okay, since all the data is sitting here, Somebody can go and run an analysis, run a query, run a, let's say, report, which can say that, okay, in the last seven days, your total sales was X, Y, Z amount. This is a very simple use case of how SQL is useful. Now, there are endless usage of SQL, be it data analyst, be it data scientist, be it data engineer, lot of places you will use SQL. I will not go into very, very minute details, okay? Coming to the types of SQL. So basically SQL is a query language, which means loosely you can think it as a programming language. Okay. So as I told you, data is sitting in this, in this database, right? And uh, Flipkart CEO wants to see what was my total sales in last seven days, for example. So you cannot directly go here and write it. What was my sales? in seven days. You cannot do that. Why? Because this is a human language, okay? What we need is a language that this system understands, this database system understands, okay? And that language is nothing but structured query language. The same thing you can ask to the system like this. Select, select sum of sales, okay? Assuming sales is a column, sum of sales from Let's say table, there is a table, table one, where, where, 
and you will say date range. So date range, you can say last seven day range. Okay. So you can say date between date between today is day one and seven days were day seven day between day one and day seven. Okay. So like this, if you write, it will give you some of sales in last seven days. Now what we are going to do here, we are going to see what are the different varieties of queries. So this is known as a query. Okay. And the language we write this query in is known as structured query language SQL. So what are the different varieties of SQL queries? So it can be uh, DDL that is data definition language. It can be DML that is data manipulation language. It can be DQL that is data query language. It can be TCL transaction control language. And there is something called TML, I believe TML. Okay. We don't bother much about these things as a, as a data engineer. Uh, I mean, as a data analyst or data scientist, we bother about DDL, DML and DQL. Okay. So in DDL, the queries will be, for example, create, okay, create table, alter table, drop table like that. Okay. In DML, you will kind of insert data in the table. So it can be insert, etc., or update, etc. Most important that we are going to focus our entire session today is data query language. Okay. And here we will do select the most important thing 90% of the time all of us use select queries so we will focus mostly on select queries these two are basically commit um, you know uh, uh, managing the access on a table all these things so normally we don't do this until or unless you are a db administrator or things like that so what we are going to focus on today is select queries okay let's come back here these are some of the basics of SQL and why to learn SQL. Do you know guys, what is the difference between data and information? So come back again to the Flipkart example. So in Flipkart table, let's say this is a database in that database, there is a table in this table, all the transaction information is stored. So how the information will be stored? Let's say there will be a transaction ID. There will be a transaction volume. There will be a transaction. Uh, you know, number of uh, quantity, you can say how many items, maybe number of items. Okay. Transaction ID 1, 2, 3, volume 12, 13, 14, number of items, let's say 2, 1, 5. Okay. So this is data. Why this is data? Because this is not processed. This is raw. Okay. This is raw. From this raw data, when Flipkart CEO comes and asks this question using this language, this becomes an information. Suppose this is total sales is, let's say one, two, three, four, five US dollars, just an example. Okay. So from this data, remember guys, what is the difference between data and information? Data is something which is raw. Information is something which is processed. What is the, what is bridging the gap between data and information? Nothing but your SQL queries in this case. Okay. So that is the difference between data and information. Now come back here, preparing environment and databases for whatever we are going to do today. So I'm not going to waste time on my SQL installation. What we need is we need a software where we can run our queries. Okay. And we need a database on which we can do practice. I will not waste time on installation. I will give you a video link in the description. You can see right now as well. I have explained in detail how to install MySQL in your machine. Once you install MySQL in your machine, you will see something like this. Okay. And this is where we are going to run all our queries today. Another important thing is how do we prepare a sample database for practice? So here in the Flipkart example, I told you there is a database, right? So for practicing or for my use case, I need a database like this. So how to do that? What I have done here is I have taken a database from the internet. Okay. And I have prepared for myself. For example, you can see here sample stuff is my database. Okay. In this sample stuff, I have multiple tables. Okay. For example, department table, for example, invoice table, you can think this is organization data. Okay. And we have employee table, we have salary table, many tables we have, but we are going to today focus mostly on department table employer table and salary table. Okay. And how can you create this similar database? I'm going to give you one file in my Google drive. The link I will paste. You go to that file, take that file and run entire file here. 
So what you can do is you can run that. I will give you one dot SQL file. Okay. What file I will give you? I will give you a dot SQL file. You can take this dot SQL file and you can run the entire file here. So what it will do is it will create this database for you. Fine. Once it creates this database for you, then you and me will be in same position. You can start writing your queries. Okay. So here what we can do is you can just come here and kind of write here some for some of the queries, prepare your environment. And next thing we are going to do is we are going to see type of SQL and flow of select. So types of SQL I already explained you in DDL, DML, TCL, DQL, etc. As I told you, most important thing here is understanding the flow of select query. Okay, so here what I can say is I can go here and say select. Okay, I'm just writing a query here. Select. Okay, and then I will say call one. Okay, call one and I will say call two. Okay, then I will say from. Okay, then I will say table one. Okay, then I will say where. Okay, and I will say condition. Okay. Okay, I will say where condition, then I will say group by group by I will say column. Okay, then I will say having and then I will say column. Okay, and then I will say order by if you understand this flow, okay, if you understand this flow, then SQL is going to be pretty simple for you, especially the select queries. Now let's try to understand what I have written here. Okay, so whenever we write a SQL query, we will start with select. I'm talking about select queries here because as I told you, most of the time you will use select queries. Okay, so here if you come and if you say select call one, call two. So what I'm saying is I want to select these two columns. Okay, then I'm saying from table. So I want to select from this table. Okay, then I'm saying where condition, which means I do not want to select everything. I want to select some of the columns only based on some of the rows only based on this condition. So understand guys, this is a filter condition, filter condition. I will show you examples now. This is a filter condition. Okay. Then you come and so say group by group by means you are grouping by on one column. So I will show you examples of how group by works. Practical examples now. Having is basically another filter after group by. Okay. So you can say filter after group by filter after group by. Okay. And here order by just to short your output in a order. So order output. If you understand this syntax, then you are good to write SQL queries. Okay. So if you write, for example, group by before where, then your query is going to fail. If you write having before group by, your query is going to fail. So this order is important. What comes first? Select, then from, then where, then group by, then having, then order by. If there is no group by, you can obviously put order by you know, you know, it's not mandatory that all the queries will have group by and having and where, but if everything is there, this is the sequence. Okay. So if you understand this select sequence guys, then we will go ahead and we will solve the huge case step by step. Very, very important part till now we were just doing some introduction. Okay. Let's go ahead and solve the huge case. What is the huge case? The huge case is now all of you know, recession is, you know, hovering over. So one, one organization is there which wants to do the cost cutting. So what the organization want to do? Cost cutting. How it wants to do cost cutting? It wants to identify the departments which are expensive for it or it wants to identify the departments from where it can fire the employees. Okay. So how do you identify the departments from where you want to fire the employees? This is a difficult situation for a CEO. Okay. So what CEO does is he, he doesn't want to directly reach to a department. He wants to do some basic analysis. What is the basic analysis guys? Find employees born after 1965. This is one simple analysis or information he wants to extract. 
okay and don't worry we will refer to the same database that i told you just now you can also create this database very very simply find employees born after 1965 first question he wants to ask first information he wants second information he wants is find departments where the department code starts with letter c maybe he doesn't like letter c let's assume that okay so he wants to have a look which department code starting with c find departments with code fin and hr okay find employees whose total salary till date is greater than 1 million see slowly he is coming down to the trimming exercise okay he wants to see where my money is going more and he wants to take a call which employees to fire okay find departments with maximum employees all these questions are leading to that direction only add name of the department in above and the seventh question is most important find most expensive department because that is the department he wants to choose for cost cutting or firing the employees and all these queries before this or all these information before this will support this decision okay so through these seven questions we will understand all the details of sql select query and we will understand how to use from how to use where how to use group by how to use having how to use order by everything i am going to tell you step by step guys please pay attention it will make your life very very easy okay how many questions we are asking seven questions we have the database ready let's go and start writing the queries okay pay attention here find employees born after 1965 so let's go here where is my employee table here is my employee table so what you can do is you can right click and do select 10000 rows okay so it will give you 10000 rows here so this is the query panel where where i will write the query this is the result grid where the result will show in the bottom you can see uh, you know status of your query will show for example if i can show you here by pulling up i ran some query before shooting so that i want to do some preparation right so all my queries are showing here and whatever queries i will run now it will show here so first query i ran is this one 10000 rows returned another short uh, setting i want to show you guys here is you can select how many rows you want to return so go to the query no go to the view go to edit basically preferences okay and you and many things you can set here for example your uh, font size may not be that big so you can go here and, and fonts and colors and change your font size okay once you change your font size you may need to restart my sql then it will be big like mine okay and what i wanted to show you mainly here is limit rows limit row count is 10000 so what i am doing here is i just want 10000 rows as my output i don't want to print or you know get all the rows because my query will take little more time i want to shoot here for training purpose right what you can do you can either uncheck this so all the results will come or you can increase or decrease this in my case it is 10000 okay so whatever query i will run it will give me first 10000 records fine so this is my employee table now what is the first question my ceo is asking my ceo is asking find employees born after 1965 so as you can see in my employee table there is a birth date column okay so the ceo is interested only in name so i will not select all the columns i will say first underscore name last underscore name it will suggest you okay from employee table okay and i can say here what is the filter uh, uh, our boss wants where um, birth date filter he wants right so birth date greater than what is the filter our boss wants 1965 so we will go here and say 1965 0101 which means 1st of january 1965 if you press this button it will run everything that is there in the console let's press this button and you can see here the is there some issue with the query no i believe my zoom is kind of blocking that let me pull this up little bit so that i can see when my query is running okay there is some query unknown field first name okay so i have to make it first f i r s t first name okay see here suggestion is also coming i i wrote the wrong column name okay let's try running now it is executing so first name and last name of the people whose birth date is greater than 1965 remember i am doing here 
one ten thousand limit, but still the number of rows is one eight seven nine only. So how many employees have birth date greater than nineteen sixty five? One eight seven nine. You can see here, guys, in the bottom, one eight seven nine rows. Okay. Now many of you would be thinking, how can I export this to Excel? So there are two ways. One is you can export from here. Okay. If you click on export here, then you can export on the CSV in your you know needed directory in local, or you can go here query export results okay both ways you can export if you want to export to a csv so our boss and give it report to the boss hey these are the people who are born after 1965 okay boss is happy how many people 1879 people let's see what is the next thing boss wants to see find departments where code starts with letter c so boss is not happy for some reason boss is not happy with the C letter, okay. So we will go here and we will go to departments table. Another thing I want to tell you guys: first time when you open MySQL, by default this administration will be opened for you. So go to schemas and then this will open for you, okay. So I'm going to department table. I'm right clicking and I'm saying select first ten thousand rows for example, okay. Um, uh, department table obviously has nine rows only, so it will return nine different departments are there. So nine rows are getting returned. Okay, so what the boss is asking, where department name starts from? So I will just break this query so that it's easier to understand. So boss is interested in department code starting with where I will say code. Okay, you see here one is code column, code like. Okay, so with like operator, I am saying that. I want to display the departments where the code starts with C. So how many code you think is starting with C here? Let's see the result only nine rows, only nine rows here, right? So let me pull this little up. So only one customer service, right? So let's run this query. This one is coming, right? And if I want to remove this, this is not the comment here. I'm not able to recollect what is the comment in my SQL. Okay. So, um, Let's remove this. Then you will see all the entry. Okay. And if you come here, you can see this entry only. Okay. So we say that boss, hey boss, customer service is one department where the code is starting with C, C, C. Okay. And suppose boss wants to see where code ends with C, then we can do like this code ends with C. Okay. No departments where code is ending with C. Fine. So Percentile is your wildcard. Many of you would be aware of this. And it's a wildcard character through which you can, if I say T, then I can see marketing is ending with T. So I'm expecting that in output. So you can see marketing is coming. Okay. So if you say percentile means ending with T, in the beginning you put it means starting with that. Okay. So you can read more about wildcards. So two of the questions we have answered for the boss. Now the boss is saying find departments where code is fin and HR. So again, the department table, select star from department where this time boss is saying us to not use like operator. So boss is telling us to use in operator. Okay. And what is boss asking? F I N fin, F I N fin and H R H R. Okay. We will delete. This is not needed. So what is boss asking? Boss is saying, give me the details of the department where code, code is in fin and HR. So you saw guys, previously I used like operator. Now I'm using in operator. That is the use of learning from the huge case, okay? No need to remember anything. If you want to compare with one thing, you can just say, you know, compare with that or you can write an in operator for multiple comparison. So let's write here. So fin and HR department details have come here. So we have answered this third question for the boss. So boss will be able to see the fin and HR department details. So for example, when it was updated, when it was inserted, etc. Notice guys, till now we are playing with just one table. How many table? One table. First query we ran with one table. This query also we are running on another table. Now we will run query on multiple tables. Now the query will start becoming little, little complex, okay? So guys, if you have been liking this video till now, please don't forget to press the like button so that I get the motivation, okay? Let's try the fourth one. Find employees whose total salary is greater than 1 million, okay? So what we need to do is we need to come here and we need to first of all select employees. So this is my employees table, okay? So we will say 
how many uh, what are the different columns in employees table let's come here you can see in employee table we have id which is nothing but employee id okay and this is employee table only no event table employee table okay employee id first name last name email etc so we will come here and we will say select first name last name or let's say we will take only id okay select id select id and what the boss is saying boss is saying whose total salary is greater than 1 million so i will say sum of salary sum of salary okay but you will notice there is no salary column here salary information is not there in employee table so where from salary will come salary will come from a different table understand guys i am not trying to explain you theory of join you will be seeing many examples where people are explaining theory of join don't see all this see how the join is happening so i am taking id and salary i want but salary is not in the employee table so what to do i need to go to salary table right in salary table i am expecting there should be a employee id see here there is a employee id so i am saying select id sum of salary from now i will write a join here from sample staff employee a join okay join sample staff employee i am sorry this should be your salary table s a l a r y salary is one table right salary is one table b so i am naming this table as b temporarily okay and the join condition will be on a dot id is equal to b dot employee id so a is which table guys employee table b is which table guys salary table so b employee id will join with a dot id okay and select id and sum of b dot salary amount i need to take b because the column name should match with which table you are taking from got it id b a dot id let's make it a little more clear a dot id b sum of b dot salary amount from sample staff employee salary what is the boss asking find employees which total salary is greater than 1 million so we will write here we will first group by group by a dot id okay and here i will say total salary i will give a alias name as total underscore s a l a r y okay total salary okay group by id and i will say having having total salary greater than 1 million see the flow guys and compare with what i wrote in the notepad 1 million how many zeros six zeros 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay okay so come here guys and compare with what i wrote in the notebook critical very very important okay so come here and see the flow here select will come then from will come where is not needed in our query then join we are writing so join will come then group by having an order by okay and we can write a order by also order by order by total salary d e d e s c let's run this if there is any issues with the query it will show here if there are some syntax error etc i don't think there is any syntax error etc guys because the result has come and if you can see here how many rows the query will return 10000 rows because that is my limit if i remove my limit it will it will return as many as it wants okay so this employee 109334 has drawn this much of salary total understand this guys and salary is arranged in descending order so employee number 109334 has earned maximum salary till date 43624 number employees has earned after that and so on and so forth now in this example i tried to explain you the concept of joins okay very very important very very critical if we don't have all the data in one table we fetch data from a different table how that is done is using joins so see here the keyword join okay so you are joining a table and b table at this point i want to suggest you another video on unfold data science where i have explained various types of joins and how these joins work 
okay you can go ahead and watch that video but i will move ahead with answering to my boss because that is more important so what is my boss is asking now so my boss has a list of which employees is making more salary and in another analysis he has a list of which employee joined you know uh, after some time or many information boss is seeing okay let's answer some more question which boss is asking so what boss is asking salary greater than 1 million boss got find department with maximum number of employees okay so we are already here department is there so what is what is that boss is asking let's do a select star on department so boss is saying give me the department with maximum number of employees okay so what we need to do is we need to join again department with employee table i believe or employee department relation table so if you see here you have a department and employee relation table okay and what is boss asking boss is asking find employees where total salary uh, sorry find departments with maximum number of employees so we will use this table basically so come here select rows just just for a simple query template okay and if you notice guys i am writing everywhere database name dot table name but if you say use this database you no need to write this direct table name you can use okay so select star from sample stub department so these are the department ids and employee ids what is the boss saying boss saying find department with maximum employees okay so we will go here and we will say select um department id okay so department id and we will say count of count of employee id basically so what i am doing here every department how many employees are there i want to take the count and every time i i am writing a count or sum etc i need to say here group by group by department id obviously because i want to see in every department copy paste department id okay and this will give me count of every employee but suppose i want to you know short it so i can short by this column okay so i can say order by order by count of department id desc so what question am i am answering to boss find department with maximum employees obviously boss will want to see the you know highest uh, employees department on the top so i am shorting it let's see what is coming okay so department number 5 is having at 5707 department number 4 is having 73487 and so on and so forth okay now the if i take this and give it to boss boss will tell me are you an idiot you are giving me department id okay i don't know what does 5 mean what does 4 mean what does 7 mean what does 9 mean i don't know i don't care okay so give me name of the department okay so as i told you guys in department employee relation you don't have department name so you need to take department name where from where from it will come see the department table it has id and name both and you have department id already here in your output so fetch name from this department table again join so let's make this as table a and say join which table sample staff dot department i will just copy it here department b what is a let's write capital b what is the join condition join condition is a dot department id okay is equal to b dot um obviously id because from the b table we are taking id that is nothing but department id so we are joining here and we also need this query if i run now mostly it will give an error i believe it is giving me but it is not fetching what i want to fetch okay so in the select i want to fetch name also right so here department id i am taking from table a but from b i want to take id uh, sorry name of the department so b dot name i will say okay and here in group by also whatever column you are selecting without aggregation ideally you should give in the group by okay now run this query so see here now boss is happy so what you are telling to boss why employee id is coming okay i think i think i think we removed this count by mistake count we removed count okay let's run this okay 
now i think it's fine so now boss will be happy what you are saying to boss boss in marketing most number of employees are there in hr less than that in quality less than that etc etc so boss has done all the initial analysis now boss wants to do take a decision which department he should fire employees from he has the employed age information he has the which employee has made most number of money etc and many other information right so what boss is asking you as an analyst one final question is find most expensive department okay and how do we find most expensive department is um we want to see in which department in which department most number of salary has gone that is point number 1 and point number 2 is per employee okay per employee maximum expense has happened in that department so what i'm what i'm trying to say you is in in department this is department and this is total salary in that department okay total salary and this is number of employees number of employees okay and here you can say um expense per employee which means if total salary is x number of employees is y then x by y is the amount i am burning on each employee right yeah on each employee so if this number is maximum that department qualifies to be you know employee should be fired from that department let's see with the example here so what we have we have count of employee id here so here what i am going to do is i am going to take another data set here okay and i am going to see i am going to basically connect it to the um salary okay employee manager relation no in salary we have employee id and we have salary amount okay so employee id we have and we have to connect employee id here also we have so let's connect it to salary table okay another join i am doing here so if we do like this guys then it will be very clear to you what we are trying to achieve okay join which table i want to join salary table okay so i will go here and write s a l a r y okay salary is my table as you can see here in salary i have a employee id okay so let's call this table as table c table c uh i am sorry this should come after this actually because uh if you write join immediately write the joining condition then another join then that joining condition okay so i am writing this join on on okay and i want to join where from my employee id is coming guys employee id is coming from table b right so i will say b dot employee id is coming from i think department table also it is coming so i can take a table itself okay so my second join condition okay okay a dot a dot i can take employee id from a okay so i will go here and say employee id a dot employee id okay and from the third table i want to join with employee id because in salary also i have employee id right so i will just go here and say c dot employee id okay but my my total sum of salary is what we need to select okay so that i will say here count and then i will say sum of sum of um c dot okay and what is my salary column name salary amount salary underscore amount okay let's try running this what happens i may get an error or it may run let's see okay is it running or did it fail it failed column employee id in field list is ambiguous okay so what is the problem here is you are selecting employee id from two table so you should say which table you want so in this case i want from a let's run this it's running okay and this is joining three different tables so it may take slightly more time than our previous queries okay and here guys you can see what you can see here count of employee ids and sum of salary amount per department this is a very very useful thing for the ceo for our boss okay and 
I want to do one last thing here because my boss is interested in knowing which department is eating my boss's money. Okay, so come here and say, I want what I want to do is I want to say sum of salary amount, sum of salary amount divided by count of employees. So in each department, how many employees are there? I want to divide the one I told you in Excel. Okay, this as as money burnt per employee. Okay. I am selecting this money burnt for employee as one column. I am selecting department wise. Okay. Come here and arrange your data in descending order of this because that is what boss is interested in. Which department is kind of eating more, more money per employee. Okay. Come here and that column you can do a order by. Let's run this guys. If it runs or there is something we missed. I believe it is running. Yeah, it's running. So this will give our boss a very good idea of which of the, you know, department the boss should shortlist for firing. Okay, this is not a good analysis. I mean, from the, but current market situation, this is quite possible, okay? So as you can see here, guys, money burnt per employee is maximum in which department? Quality management. And money burnt is in which department? Customer service. So our, our boss does not like C for some reason because initially he is telling us find the name starts with C. So I believe our boss will go and start firing employees from customer service. He will just go ahead and look at the total salary withdrawn from the customer service. And you know, those guys might be the candidate for firing. Okay. So what did you learn from this large query guys? You learned almost everything of SQL. Okay. So you are using three different tables. You are joining that table and you are reaching to a conclusion, which department employee should be fired. Now, uh, did you notice guys? I did not say you, this is where clause, this is having clause. This is this clause. This is that clause. I told you with an example, with an huge kiss, how these things are being used. Okay. Now, I want you to take one exercise from here. Okay. So, you remember I gave answer to multiple questions through multiple queries. So, how many questions I answered? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I want you to create one large data. I will write here, guys, so that you don't confuse. Uh, that is the problem with this thing. Let me make it full screen. Okay. So this is your assignment guys. Okay. Create one large data, which can answer, which can answer all seven questions that I answered by separate queries. Okay, all seven questions. This is the homework for you guys. And remember this, this flow is pretty important for you. Don't forget this flow. I gave you basics of SQL. So guys, as you know, it takes some time and effort to create this kind of content. Please share within your circle. Drop me a comment, do the homework. And please don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell icon so that I stay motivated and create similar content. I'll see you all in the next video guys. Wherever you are, stay safe and take care.